may as well introduce you to Tater. That's our newest cat. We got her half a year ago, maybe. Got her last fall. She is, what is it, part Siamese and part stray cat. So, we don't know what the hell. She looks like my other cat. But, as for today, we got a ton of miscellaneous stuff to do. First, I'm going to open this stuff up. And we'll just start opening right now. It's a little hard to do one-handed, but... Pretty much every time I do it, the gauge falls off. Put that on later. This will come on because it's it's just a little bit cooler than what the thermostat is set to there. This little cat, or tater, is whining a little bit because she's still young and she hasn't been out very much. I hear you. Where are you? There she is. No, that means up. Come on, cat. God, it's so hard to train cats. But so far, everything looks good in here. The butterfly weed is taken off pretty good. Got fuzzies on the lupine. I should take that out and show you a little closer. But I gotta get the lids off of these. My daily grind with these things is to get the covers off and check them for need of water, water them if necessary. And then I make sure that I turn them or move them around in here. Is he, no, no. I have to get her out of here. She's just like, just like Maisie. She will jump in there and destroy stuff. Okay, so daily I turn these around, move them to different areas in there. And if they're getting long enough, I got to take them off a heat mat. So let me get this other side open and see what they look like. Got all the covers off. And the purple milkweed, which is, it's not threatened, but it's pretty rare in Wisconsin. This is doing pretty good. Like, we got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, we got roughly a third of the flat up on that one. This one, less. But they look like they're doing fine. The wavy hair grass, I'm only seeing two up on that one. That's a warm season. I don't know. I, no, I think it is a cool season. I'm going to have to look that up. I know the June grass is a cool season and both of those are well both of those prefer cool weather to germinate so i'm guessing they're they're both early or you know cool season plants let's open that up So we're supposed to get partial sun today. This time of day, I just leave these right here. And I try at noonish to move them over there. These don't have artificial light, so I want to give them as much light as I can. And I push them up close to each other at night, so they, you know, it is getting either close to zero or 
a little bit below zero at night. There is uh, sprouts everywhere, kind of mixed. That one looks way different from these. And that looks like grass. So I might have a couple weeds in here. But all in all, pretty good. It's a little on the dry side. I, I really don't like these 98 flats. The 98 count flats because they're so shallow. You know, now I gotta I gotta pull all these out of the here and put them in pots real soon. Well, I'm gonna let them get at least two inches tall, I believe. Okay, but that doesn't need any immediate attention. That one doesn't. Let's just show you this real quick. I wanted to tension the wires in the vineyard today. It's really icy cold out there right now. It's going to be in the 50s, but I believe right now it's 40-something, but there's just an icy wind coming out of the north, so I really don't feel like it if, it, if it's going to be nasty. So we'll see. If it warms up, I'll go down there and do that. If not, I will just concentrate on the welding. I'm going to do a welding, my first weld today, and that's, that's pretty nerve-wracking but got to do it. I need to build the bracket for the bracket I designed, and hopefully it works, but once I start welding, I'll, I'll be able to change it if I want. It loops over this and this and has a bit of a recess for the nut, and then it comes down and has... Uh, it actually duplicates what is on the bracket that comes with the Schaefer fan. And that bracket is over there by all the welding stuff. I picked up a bunch of welding stuff yesterday. Miscellaneous rods and, you know, when you're starting something new, you don't know what the hell you're going to need. And if you're as far away from town as I am, if you don't have what you need, the project can be put on hold for two, three, four days, depending on the weather. You know, sometimes we don't go to town for a week or two. So everything in here is looking pretty good. The hair grass, wavy hair grass, is taking the longest time to germinate. I looked on their website and I believe I know one of them said that they only got 50% germination. Uh, that was, I'll have to mention where I got them from. I, I can't remember it right now. But it, was, uh, it wasn't one of the big sites. They uh, had 50% germination. And when I received the seeds, they, it was short. I mean, you're, only, you're paying for 50 seeds. And it wasn't that much, but it was still short like seven seeds. You would think they would give you a little bit over. This little thing I water every day. That's what was left after putting one seed in each of those in the hair grass. So there, I think there's seven seeds in here, or six seeds, whatever. They might not come up at all. That little cat wants to come in here real bad. Both of them, when they hear me in here and they can't get in, they get all freaked. I got two fans. Uh, the pedestal fan. I was going to get it like an industrial one, but I this this was like 18 bucks, and the other the industrial ones go from like 80 to 200 or over 200. So I really need to know what I need before I invest that much money. And this might do the job just fine. I mean, if this lasts three, three or four years in the greenhouse, and we'll, we'll probably use that like when I'm working in the, um, in the shed during the summer, because this will be taken down 
so it won't be needed in here so I'll probably use these elsewhere so we'll see how long these last and see if there's a need for a, a better one we already have one high-end fan and the way I'm thinking we'll probably need two of these especially with these with a tent style greenhouse like this if we had solid ends I would just have a uh, one of those vents right that goes right at the top a louvered vent with a running on a, a thermostat that the vent automatically open up and it ventilates it when it gets to a certain temperature that is probably what i'll do with this i'll probably build a frame for this now that i got the welder try my hand at aluminum welding or maybe make it out of steel and use polycarbonate and have a regular screen door in here and have a vent up top not much room up there but i should be able to work something out we'll see all right now i need to pull out the soil i don't have a whole lot left but i have the ingredients to make some I need to fill a flat. I have some Rudbeckia, which I need to plant. And that's going to sit out here with this stuff. So I'm going to run and get a flat and get that filled. I also brought along, I believe these are called daisy trays. These are for, especially when the plants start getting a little bigger these things can get a little heavy and these these injection molded um, tray or flats are really flimsy so besides the the base for them this these are a little more rigid and it gives it some strength so you can carry them around I, I got enough of them for everything so I think I'll just put them Put all of them into these and it, it does look like I'm gonna have to mix up some soil we had we got a lead on blue barrels uh, 55 gallon barrels with locking tops which is awesome but they sold out of them so we're gonna get some hopefully this weekend and what I want to do is dump this whole thing of peat into the barrel and add vermiculite and perlite and I'll moisten it a little bit with some uh, liquid fertilizer some real weak liquid fertilizer and then it'll be pretty much the exact same thing as this all this is is peat with a little bit of perlite a very little bit of perlite and a very tiny bit of fertilizer I mean, the peat itself has natural fertilizer in it. I'm not sure what the specs are on here. I'm sure it's on here somewhere, but it's really, really, really low amount of fertilizer. And that is what you want until the plants are up and growing. Once they're two, three inches tall, um, then I'll start fertilizing them. And again, with very weak fertilizer. It's real easy to kill your plants by over fertilizing them. Okay, I'm just going to dump the whole thing in because I don't believe this is enough. Nope. Yeah, I had to move over to this bench so that anything that falls off of this doesn't fall down to the ground and get lost. So what I'm going to do is mix up some peat and the other ingredients just in this bag, shake it up a little bit, and fill the rest of this. And what I do is get it lightly filled to the top, and then I press it down just a bit, and then put the seeds in there. Then I sprinkle fine vermiculite over the top of it. And then it's ready for germination. Well, let me mix up some more soil.
bag stuff is definitely more twiggy, coarser, and it might not absorb water as easy as the potting soil. They might have additives in there to allow it to absorb water better. It's just that first time, it's really hard to do the initial moistening, but when you're doing it, when you're watering from the bottom, letting the plant soak up through the holes in here, um, it's a lot easier. If you pour it on the top, they'll just, the peat would just float right out of these um, cells. Yeah, this stuff is hard to hard to work with with all the twigs in because it doesn't want to press down into the cells. I wouldn't want to try it on a smaller a uh, smaller opening. Got lumber in there, which is fine in a pot. So maybe in the future I will just get, if I could get this in bulk or just buy a finer, a finer grade of peat, maybe run it through the blender or something. But that's a whole lot of work for no, no real payback. I could reuse this stuff, but you would want to really want to sterilize it if you're going to reuse it, because it'll start carrying disease. And you don't want that. I will probably just dump this stuff into the flower garden once the season is over, planting season. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, just going to press them down a little bit, give a little bit of room for vermiculite on top of them, which is what I cover them with. That gives them a nice, easy path for the seed head to come out. And the vast majority of plants want to be, or seeds, want to be planted at about double the width of the seed, which is very little, depending on the seed. And I believe this is Rudbeckia herta, and that's a uh, black-eyed Susan. I forget what the, this particular variety, it's not Indian blanket, but I can check on that later. So it got to 85 in here. Where did I put that? Oh, here it is. It's 84.4 now. Pulled down a little bit. But as soon as that sun came out, I mean, it was in, uh, in the 50s when I started on this stuff. And then it zoomed right up to 84 <coughs> or 85, excuse me. So I have both of the windows open let some air through here but that shows you the need for circulation and i need it quick so these two little fans should be helpful but i really got to get this up to do some uh, heavy duty exhausting this one's going up as i showed you in the back there and will blow air out from up high and i will probably put where did I put the, the cyclone there, right here, and blow that in, blow cooler air in, and blow hotter air out. And I got to get this, these two side things so that they roll up. All of that needs to be done real quick, but for today, I'm just going to keep going on this. I will plant 
the seeds in here. First I got to get some water in here to get this hydrated. Then I'm going to plant the Rudbeckia, Rudbeckia herta, I believe it is, but I'll have the packet soon. That is just a little packet of burpy seeds, so I don't know how many it will fill, but I'll get them all in here. So let me get the seeds and we'll get moving on this. The uh, common name on this is Gloriosa Daisy, and they're calling it a perennial, but I could swear that um, it is Rudbeckia herta, like I thought, and I could swear that those are biennial. But we'll see. Uh, normally, the wild ones around here do not look like this. They are just the yellow, you know, your standard black-eyed Susan. I have these and the standard ones, and I have yellow coneflower, uh, various other ones growing in the front garden right now, and I'm going to collect some seeds from them at the end of the year and plant them, uh, toss the seeds in other places. But this year, I'm using pre-emergent, so I can't do anything by seed. So, I'm going to throw some of these just so I can get some nice color down in the little prairie patch where I have the little blue stem. Well, that was kind of a waste of time. I wanted to show how this absorbed the water from the bottom and would turn this color after, usually it happens after, you know, like 10 minutes or something like that. But I uh, went and brought all this stuff in here. I switched the plants around and it, it just wasn't happening. It's not, like I said, this, uh, this baled stuff is insanely dry and it basically just wants to float but sooner or later it starts absorbing the water and after it has a little bit of moisture in it then it then it'll wick water up then it'll wick water up really nice but the way it comes in these in these bales just dry as a fart so when i do do this I don't know the recipe, how much water to add to it. I'm going to try, you know, like five gallons of water or so, and then stir it every every day for a couple days, and that should give me a good mix. But, you know, time will tell. It could be ten times that. I doubt it, though. Okay. If I remember correctly, these seeds are insanely tiny. I've collected seeds from, oh, the majority of the plants that I grow. I, you know, collect a handful here and there and toss it in a different area. But I can't remember. You can just, you can tell just by looking at it that they're not going to be that big. So hopefully it won't be too much of a pain. What I do, I have a, where is it? I have a, this is really nice. This is a, a little seed, I don't know, what what do they even call it? A seed sower from Burpee. I got one on Amazon that was like a light green color, and it was made out of polystyrene, which if you've ever made a, a model, a scale model like model cars or anything, you know that it's it has no flexibility whatsoever. If you bend it, it's going to it's going to break and it was thinner than this so I ordered it and it it took six eight weeks to get here it was shipped from China and the first one had a good size crack in this clear part so I told them about it they wanted me to send a picture which I did you know this you know in China this probably costs less than a penny so they sent me another one that was completely smashed. It was it was an envelope full of crumbles. So, you know, I just got a refund on it. 
inseam and it didn't have these little ridges in the chute here to slow the seeds down. At least I don't think it did. But anyways, it was a piece of crap and it was well over twice the price. It was probably three times. No, it was twice the price. It was twice the price of this one. So I would say go, go to your, uh, this was at Menards, I believe, but it's probably, uh, it's probably available damn near everywhere. So that's the way to go and just get it right at the store instead of Amazon. Okay, let's see what these look like and get them planted. I don't know if I can even focus this tight, but they they look like the little things, what are they called, jimmies? You put them on cupcakes and stuff, but about half that size. They're really, really tiny, but it looks like I have plenty to just put in here, put it on its smallest setting and tap them in which is what i did with oh at least one of these i think i did it with with uh, butterfly weed and the other one that had it oh the let's go around here and this purple prairie purple prairie clover i wanted to call it a coneflower and I think I did it with the, with the June grass as well, but maybe not. Anyway, uh, then you got to go back and thin them, which these need another thinning um, probably in a day or two, but that's fine. I got a new pruning scissors, or a thinning scissors. I keep wanting to call it pruning. I'll show you that. Um, but I wanted to say something about this. The... What I did with these is I started putting the tags all on one side. Like right now they're all towards the middle. So tomorrow when I open this up, I'll make sure that they're all towards the outside. And I believe tomorrow I'm going to remove these two single heating mats and shuffle the plants around so that I have four of them on this heating mat and three of them out with no heat at all this one needs to come off the heat they're all they're already tall enough and most of them have sprouted so they really need to come off the heat this one needs to remain for a little while and that one needs to remain for quite some time so I'm gonna do some shuffling around tomorrow then after probably after a week then this big one will go and these two little ones will come back for any that have not uh, completely sprouted yet okay let's get these planted <laughs> seeds in there and what I do when I'm seeding like this is always make sure to do a full row there's three then two then three and so on and if I absolutely have to stop before it's done I mark the last row that was completed so I would come back and start here and just leave that in there sometimes you got to stop midway I can see that they're already drying out down here. Man, this stuff does not take water very well. I'm going to turn this because this there's a little bit of a slope here. I'm going to turn it and then get started. <laughs> like I would have enough to do another flat but I am not going to do that uh, 38 of these is plenty so I'm going to go over one more time and
distribute the rest of these. And I said I'd show you this, but these are for bonsai trees, little precision pruners, and they have big enough hand grips. Usually when you get small scissors, you have these tiny little hand grips and they're very uncomfortable to use. So I'm thinking these are gonna be really nice. I also got, I got a little wind coming in here so I'm trying to turn a little bit. I also got these big tweezers for the same thing for thinning. So I'm gonna re, well, I'm going to add the rest of these and try to kind of spread them out a bit and then uh, add some water to this and I will be done. Oh, and add the vermiculite to the top of it. Just a tiny little sprinkle. grade horticultural I only have a, a little bit of coarse grade the coarse grade is great for mixing up a soil mixture um, and you can actually grow plants completely in the coarse grade the fine grade is really fine and it's great for what I'm doing right now just get this tiny little layer then if the plants some some seeds require sunlight to germinate which I believe oh which one one of the plants in there requires sunlight to germinate and I believe it is one of the ones that's having a difficult to, yeah the hair grass I believe that requires sunlight to germinate or light. So with just a very thin layer of this, vermiculite is uh, somewhat translucent. So not only can you get a very thin layer down, which is what you need to do, these seeds only need to be planted double their width, and you've seen how small they are. So no matter what you put over them, it's already going to be more than that by a little. And it retains water. So this is pretty much the best way to do it. Just sprinkle this lightly over there and then get it moist. And the vermiculite retains water. So it's like the perfect thing to put on top of, especially little seeds. If you got a seed that needs to be down a half inch or something like that, then you you got to poke a hole. And those are generally big seeds, so they're easy to handle. These tiny little seeds, not so much. Yeah, just working out here for a short while. I've already come up with ideas for a permanent potting bench, a bench with a solid top. And I would put it on big industrial wheels. The bigger the better, that way you can roll it around and uh, not have to worry about every little thing that it hits when you got small wheels. If it hits a crack in the floor it wants to stick. and just a pain in the ass but I'd like something I'd probably use a Corian top because your top you want your top to be uh, you want your top to be solid so that you can do your potting and then scrape up the soil and stuff but it you need also but you also want something that you can clean with a plywood top like this, you can get 
all sorts of pathogens growing in the little cracks and you'll pass them from one year to the next and and you could have infestations of fungus or whatever in your greenhouse so with a corian top you can use some good cleaner like some bleach or something get it nice and clean and just do all your potting and thinning and stuff there and then i would put a drawer in it for the pruning scissors and the thinning scissors and uh, little little tags just have a nice big drawer that has all that stuff right there and then i would put a foot rest on it and a place to put uh, soil mixes and stuff but that'll be for next year this year nothing else gets done except for what's on the list and the list is huge so nothing new I'm not putting anything new on it okay now I'm gonna spritz this and get it on the heating mat and then clean up my mess Once I get my mess cleaned up, then I have to move those two flats over here where they'll catch more sun as the day goes on. It's, it's a little bit past noon already. I can't believe how long I've been out here already, but it's already past noon. So you can see the sun is like dead center. So they'll catch sun the rest of the day if I move them over here. All right, I'm going to get this place cleaned up and finish up. Okay, that'll about wrap it up. I went way long on this. I went and got some stuff. I got this little thing for the, for the labels, for the little plant labels and what else did I do I mean it took me forever oh when I was over in the shed I was looking for the wrench for taking off the the cutter on my grinder and you know for taking the disc off it's got two little tabs on there can't find it anywhere so I was looking everywhere so it's already getting really late and I gotta get to work so I'm gonna have to wrap it up Tomorrow, I am hoping to cut the ends of these bottom flaps and get the poles in. And I'm going to have to assemble these two and find a place for it. And I'm hoping either later on today or tomorrow evening to do my first weld. Uh, my wife found that welder at a well, it was a barn sale, kind of, or a shed sale last year, and we've had it sitting around waiting, and now's the time to learn to weld, and I have a ton of stuff that I would like to build prototypes for, including a self-leveling cart for in the vineyard for when I'm pruning. We have such a, you know, the angle, it's on a, a double angle parts of the vineyard, and it's... You know, it's just kind of difficult. You either got to bring stuff with you or, you know, have it all hanging from your body. Or I would like to have a nice cart where I can, a nice deep cart that I can put the prunings in and get a whole aisle done. But the first thing I need the welding skills for is to make that custom bracket for the fan. The fan's got to go up. But for now, I'm going to use this. I'm going to turn it on and get the hell out of here. So... If you want to see the future videos, make sure that you subscribe and click on the update. Thanks for watching and have a great day.